Hello, in this video I'm going to save the landscape as a digital asset, import it into Unreal, and create a basic landscape material. So to bring this into Unreal, I'm first, after this Hartfield Road, I'm going to add an output. And I'm going to select all of these nodes and convert it to a subnet. Now I'm going to right click on the subnet and click create digital asset. Now bring up the new digital asset interface. I'm using Houdini 20. So this is the new interface. If you're still using Houdini 19.5, then um, you should be able to still follow along. So just some of the labels may have changed and some of the, the layouts are a little different, but we're still setting the name of the digital asset here. And I'm going to call it PE landscape. PE is just a project prefix that we've been using for the digital assets we've been creating with Project Pegasus. I want to put this into a sub menu called Pegasus so that they're all organized together in the menu. I don't want to add an author to this in the name of the digital asset. So I'm going to uncheck that. So rather than saving this to the usual location, which is going to be the Houdini folder in your uh, documents folder, I want to save this into a directory that's housing all of the digital assets for Project Pegasus. I'm going to do that using a variable that I created when I set up the package file for Project Pegasus. If you aren't familiar with package files, I highly recommend you watch some of the introductory videos where I talk about setting up a package file the folder structure that we used for Project Pegasus. And when you just use these variables, it's kind of quick and easy ways of saving files into specific directories. And so this Pegasus demo variable will take me straight to the folder that contains all of our Project Pegasus digital assets. If you haven't got to do this, you can save this into the usual location. This workflow will still work just fine, but I just want to demonstrate the workflow that we used for Project Pegasus. So now I'm going to hit create. And I will save this subnet as a digital asset. Now that it's saved, I'm just going to add our Pegasus logo. As you got saved in this icons folder. I'm not going to expose any parameters on this digital asset. I just want to create it so I can easily import it into Unreal. So I'm going to hit accept. And now we have this digital asset. Just so right click, save node type, just to save all of those changes. And now I'm going to import this into Unreal. So here I am on Unreal. I've just created a empty scene, just a basic scene from new level. And I created a basic scene. Now I'm just going to port that digital asset into Unreal. So here's that digital asset, that landscape digital asset that I just made. And we can import it. I'm just going to drag and drop and place that into our scene. If Houdini Engine doesn't start automatically, we can come up to this menu, Houdini Engine, and click Create Session. Houdini Engine has connected. And now our landscape has started cooking. And this will just take a little while to cook as it runs through those different high voltage road nodes and erodes the landscape. There we go, that's finished cooking. So there's our landscape in Unreal. And we can come down and hit play to preview this map. And then we have a landscape. So obviously you haven't got any material at the moment. So I'm just going to quickly create a very basic material so we can more easily preview our landscape in Unreal. And it just looks a little bit nicer. Obviously, this is going to be a block out material, just something to get started. I want to learn more about some of the more advanced materials that were set up. And I highly recommend checking out George's video series where he'll go into a bit more detail about the additional detail that he added to this landscape after I completed the block out. So let's just stop that. Now, for the material, if I just come back over to Houdini. And take a look at our landscape. It's a middle mouse click here. You can see the layers we've got here on the landscape. So we've got the water and the debris layers, which we can currently see here in the viewport. We've also got a sediment layer here as well and a bedrock layer. So we've got a few different layers here we can use. 
They can use those in Unreal and add different materials and textures to different parts of the height field. And you can customize these layers or make additional or make your own layers and, and combine different layers together or use the height field mask by feature. Which you can use to mask out different areas of a map. And then using a high field copy layer. Move that mask then to your own custom layers, which you can bring into Unreal as well. So there I've just created a layer called layer 01, and I've masked out some of these slopes. And I could use this to add some details and colors to different parts of the map. Because this is just a block out, I'm just going to use the layers I've already got. So let's come back into Unreal and over to the Contents Browser and into the Materials folder. And we're going to create a material. I'm going to call this M underscore landscape. And jump inside. So here we have a material. And I'm going to use those layers to blend different materials together. Let's add a landscape layer blend. And under the details tab, I can add additional layers. I'm going to begin with the bedrock layer. That's essentially going to be my grass layer. I'm then going to have the debris layer. Layered on top of that will be the water layer, which I'm not going to use as water. I'm going to color it differently, but this is just the, I want to match the same names that I've got in Houdini. And then finally, I'm also going to use that sediment layer as well. So now I've got these three different layers. I want to create three different materials. So let's add a make material attributes. I'm going to hold three and click in the viewport to add down a constant color. And just make this kind of dark green color for the grass. And attach that to the base color. Now I want a material for the debris. Let's make this a kind of sandy color. This is this is this debris kind of building up from the water erosion. Then I want the water layer. As I said, this is, I'm not going to treat this as water instead. I want this to be kind of sediment that's been left away at the bottom of these riverbeds. That's been this a darker brown. And then finally we have the sediment layer, which is similar to the debris, but it's much finer. So I'm going to make this a lighter color. This will be quite subtle on the landscape. Now, because this is blending different materials together, I could check use material attributes and then plug this into the material attributes. But actually, what I'm going to do is leave this as a material, add a break material attributes. Plug this base color. So we're getting all of these base colors blended together. And now I can just add a roughness to this material. I want it to be very rough. So I'm going to set something like 0 0.8. And hit save. Now I need to add this material to the landscape. I could come back to Houdini, make some changes to these lash sets, save it, and then re-import it. But rather than doing that, I'm going to come up to Houdini Engine and click Open Houdini Session Sync. Now we'll launch a session of Houdini, and I can make changes to that digital asset and see them update in Unreal directly. So now that's launched a session of Houdini. Let's dock this over to the right here and Unreal to the left, and to get the digital asset appearing in Houdini. First of all, I just need to select the digital asset and recook it. And now that will update in Houdini. 
And there we go. Now I can see the landscape in Houdini as well as in Unreal. Now we come inside this geometry node. We have the digital asset. Right click, allow editing contents. Now I can come inside and make some changes. And what I want to do is after this high field road, is add an attribute create. Let's call this attribute Unreal Material. Let's give us plenty of space. I want to create a attribute called Unreal Material. And this is a specific attribute that Houdini Engine will recognize and allows us to add an attribute that is a path to a material in Unreal. I want to create this on primitives. And the type is going to be a string. Now if I come back to Unreal, come back to the contents browser, and right click on my material and click copy reference. And then paste that value into the string field here. And I connect that to the output. We can see that's currently updating here inside of Unreal. Here it is, we can see it's currently cooking. And now we've got that material applied to the landscape. Now if I zoom in here, we can see we've got some issues with the material. We've got some very odd gradients going on. You can see some noise on the landscape. And that's because if I take a look at this height field road, I'm going to add a height field remap. And I'm going to take the debris layer and just hit compute range. And so you can see we've got some values here outside of the range of zero to one. Let's check the water layer. Compute range. So here we've even got some negative numbers. So I want to make sure I clamp these so they're between a value of zero and one rather than inputting negative or very large numbers. Let's just begin with the bedrock layer. You can also select different layers here from the menu on the right. Let's just rename this Remap Bedrock. Let's reset these to default. The bedrock is the grass layer, and I actually want this to cover the entire map. So I'm going to set the minimum value to a one to a value of one. That will just kind of flood the entire landscape with this grass layer. And this is the bottom layer, and I'm then layering different materials on top of this. You can, as I said, create your own custom layers. Because I'm just doing the block out, I'm just going to use the layers I've already got. And then I want to make sure I check clamp minimum and clamp maximum. And that will just make sure these values are clamped between a value of 0 and 1. We can do the same. Do that for the next layer. Well, let's do it for the debris. Leave this at a value of zero and one and just check clamp minimum maximum. This is remap debris. I can just duplicate that layer. Next, I'm going to do the water. So let's set this to the water layer. And then finally, the sediment. Again, I'm just going to duplicate that. This one is sediment. And sediment. I'm then going to add a blast. And just blast. And just blast the mask layer. It's actually blank, but I just like to delete any layers that I'm not using. Now for middle mouse click, I've just got bedrock sediment, height, debris, and water, just the layers that I'm using. And now I can attach that so that it updates in Unreal. Now we see those changes in, in Unreal, and those colors are now appearing correctly.
I can see the sediment here in the channels and then the debris and water layers here in the river channels. And this is how I worked when building the landscape. I brought this in as a digital asset into Unreal and slowly built up these erosion and noise layers a bit at a time whilst previewing, the, whilst previewing them inside of Unreal. And this way I could kind of skate around for different gameplay areas, areas that I liked, and then make changes to try and get the kind of look of the landscape that I wanted. So next I'm going to make some changes to this high voltage door and I'll just add some more noise to this landscape. So I'm going to increase the amplitude from 4 to 16 and let's see what that looks like. Because I unchecked cache simulation, that's going to update and we should see those changes appear in Unreal. And there we see those changes in Unreal. And because we're able to quickly make changes back and forth between Houdini, I can always come in, preview these results, and decide whether or not I want to make any further changes. Let's tone that back down to say six. There's that change updated. So now I want to just save those changes to the digital asset. If you want to, you can re enable this cache simulation for all of the height fields so that they don't recook every time you make a change. A quick way to select all of the high field road nodes, you can either come up to edit and click find node, or the shortcut is forward slash. So if I hit forward slash, that'll bring up this find node feature, and I can just start typing a road. Here I can see all of those road nodes, and I can just hit enter to select all of them. I selected every single one of them. I can just click cache simulation to apply that to all four of the nodes. And that will prevent those high voltage road nodes from continuously recooking. So now that's I'm happy with the changes I've made, I'm going to right click and click save node type to save those changes to the digital asset. So now with those changes saved, I'm going to come back over to Houdini Engine and click close session sync. So that's now stopped that session sync. I'm going to save all those changes and then preview this map. So this is how I worked when I was blocking out the train and building this environment. I worked iteratively backwards and forwards between Houdini and Unreal using Houdini Engine making adjustments and changes to the erosion, to the different distortion and noise nodes, until I got a look I was happy with. And I could scout out areas of the map that I thought would work well for the gameplay areas. So that concludes this Highfield Blockout video series. If you want to know more about extra detail that added to the landscape and how the materials were built, then check out George's video series, where he'll go through in more detail how he went about building the material and adding additional detail to the landscape. And also check out the cliff video series where I go through generating procedural cliffs, which I can then import into Unreal using Nanite. And these were placed along the steeper areas of the landscape.